everyone, it's Rose. And today I have something completely different for you. Uh, I am going to open a jigsaw puzzle. And I had actually planned on opening this in a video where I opened a bunch of diamond paintings as well. And this was just going to be a little something extra. But I'm actually dying to start it. So I'm going to do it as a one-off. And I'm actually going to start this jigsaw puzzle and uh, work on it a little bit uh, in this video. So uh, let's get going. Okay, everybody. So um, today I am trying something that is completely different. Uh, I have not done a jigsaw puzzle in, I can't even tell you how many years. And um, so I'm really excited about doing this one. And um, so I ordered, I think, three or four jigsaw puzzles from different stores that I work with. This one comes from Your Best Deals, and uh, it is J2. So I'm numbering my jigsaw puzzles J, and starting at one, and just going to keep on going until I stop buying jigsaw puzzles. Um, and that might be sooner than later, just depending on what this experience is like. So here we have it. It is a 50 by 75 uh, jigsaw puzzle, or 75 by 50. Uh, it is, I call it, well, no, actually on the website, it is called Tree Root Beauty. And here is the picture of the puzzle. I thought this would be as a starting jigsaw puzzle, not the worst thing in the world to work with. And I'm just going to come around and see what you can see through the camera because this is the first time I've been uh, recording here for a long, long time. Uh, so I'm just going to, I'm going to do an unboxing. I haven't watched uh, puzzle unboxing, so this might not be what other people do, but it's what I'm going to do. So uh, the pieces, it's a thousand pieces. The pieces come in a Ziploc bag, which is good. I like to have the uh, picture there that I'll be able to refer to. Now, uh, before I pour this out, this is my kitchen counter and I have a very small kitchen and so this is the largest part of my counter that doesn't have kitchen appliances and stuff on it. So what I am going to do is I have one of these trend file and save folders and what I did was I put a little bit of uh, packing tape in two of the corners there because I did order a felt mat that um, that would be well that will be coming to me at some point uh, in the not too distant future. I think I'm gonna have to move this camera a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, I did order a felt mat, but it hasn't arrived yet, and uh, I. Um, missed the turn to go to the fabric land because I was just going to buy some felt. Um, anyway, that didn't happen. So I'm just going to pour this all out here. And what I have here is this uh, new kind of tape that they've come out with. I'm sure you've seen commercials for it. I can't remember what the what the commercials what the name of the tape is on the. Um, on the uh, ads that I've seen for it, but it is this clear stuff and it's, um, it's kind of double-sided tape, but when you've used it, you can just reuse it. You can uh, pull it off and um, just reuse the tape by simply rinsing it to get any uh, stuff that's gotten onto it, off of it. So I'm just going to find... Ah. Okay. Let's do 
this a slightly different way here. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. All right, so I have to find, okay. So I have uh, my pieces of packing tape. And so because I, I actually wanna be able to pull this off, I'm attaching it to the back of the packing tape so it will stick, but it will come off. If I attached it to the paper, the paper would probably rip. So I don't want that. So I'm not using a lot of it, just a couple of inches, because all I want to do is make sure that I don't accidentally send this cardboard flying. And let me just move this back a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just removing the, the backing plastic off of this. There we go. And sticking this on here. There. And now, when I flip this over, what I want is I want it to stick on the edge of my counter. This uh, file and save is just about the right width for my counter. So uh, that little bit of tape, this alien tape, or whatever it is, you see how it sticks, but it'll come off. So I'm not going to accidentally push this off, but I can lift it off and just position this exactly where I want it. Actually, I'm going to move it a little bit more. There we go. There. That's it. All right. So now I've got it positioned the way I want. So I'm going to work on my puzzle on here. And that's all I need the alien tape for. So I'm just going to put this away. I'm keeping some of that outer wrapping uh, just to, um, just in case I find little pieces of tape that I want to um, reuse but I don't need them right away. I'll have all of that plastic backing in here. Okay, and that's probably way more information than you need, but I'm just talking through every little thing that I'm doing here. Okay, let me put this away and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So um, here, let me just reposition the camera again because I want you to see what I'm working on in terms of puzzle pieces. Make sure that you can see everything there. So I'm going to have to be switching back and forth, moving the camera back and forth. Uh, but for now, I think we're okay. Don't need those scissors. All right. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I need something that I can just pack this puzzle up in when I need to use my counter for something else. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing is that this puzzle has letters on the back. Uh, not sure if you can see that, but there are F's and D's and other things. Uh, there's nothing here telling me why that is. Oh, there's the silica package. Um, and there's a bit of dust, not a lot of dust. But, you know, we always get puzzle dust. And so, the first thing I'm going to do is turn all of these pieces right side up and uh, set aside the edge pieces so that I can start working on the edges. So, I'm going to fast forward through the process of turning all these pieces right side up. So the first thing that I'm noticing here is that it looks like for this puzzle, all of the pieces are this shape where you've got two outies and two innies, um, which means that, uh, this is going to be a harder puzzle to do than I originally thought when I was ordering it. Whoops! 
because when there's a whole bunch of different shapes and sometimes you've got you know three outies or four outies or th three innies or four innies uh, it's it is much easier to do that puzzle because you can look for those interesting uh, shapes and uh, you know you're cutting out a whole bunch of the pieces that uh, you're that you need to work with. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case with this. So I thought maybe I had I I thought maybe I had something going, but barely not. Nope. All right, that's fine. That's fine. I'll get to that when I get to it. Back to fast forward. Okay, and at this point I am not sorting the pieces according to color or anything like that. For right now, I just sort of want to get a sense of what this puzzle is actually all about. Uh, you know, the, the, the shapes that I'm going to be dealing with, um, the kinds of cuts, and I'm also going to try and figure out at some point uh if those letters on the back have any meaning um and whether i would consider it cheating if they if they are there to help put the puzzle together faster uh whether i would consider it cheating for myself to um to use whatever shortcut they they offer now, I'm also seeing that some of these pieces have just little tiny bits that are keeping them attached one to the other. So when that happens, I'm just separating them and setting them aside. And it looks like I'm not actually going to have enough room here to lay out all of the pieces. Um, and it's not great to uh, be doing this on a black countertop because there's a lot of black and dark colors on this and um, that kind of just fades into the background uh, so I don't have the contrast that I need for the different pieces so you know that's that is what it is I'm not gonna fuss too much about it because like I say I'm gonna go easy on myself since this is the first puzzle I'm doing in I don't even know how many years it could be decades since I've done a puzzle I think I remember doing one with my daughter when she was very little so here I see a piece that has a little bit of paper uh, stuck in the any cut out and uh, so I just tore that off and threw it in the sink which is where the trash will go for now and I'm small, and so I can't actually easily reach across the uh, counter. So I'm not going all the way to the edge of the counter with these pieces. I can't remember what color the uh, puzzle mat I bought was. It might be green or something like that. Uh, but what I do plan to do is go to Fabricland and buy um, a few pieces of felt that are probably about the same size as the file and save folder uh, in different colors. So I'll probably buy black and white. Uh, I might buy yellow or something like that. So that uh, for different puzzles that I do, I will be able to uh, choose the, you know, an appropriate color of felt to work the puzzle on. And so whenever I find an edge piece, I'm just putting it on the, the cardboard. And I don't want to put uh, the puzzle pieces too close to the edge here because um, my clothes will rub against them and they'll end up falling on the floor and I've got a cat and a dog and if they start playing with puzzle pieces that fall on the floor, I'm not going to have a complete puzzle. 
Now, I don't have enough room here to actually lay out all of these pieces. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, I'll do as much as I can, and then I'm going to get something else that I can lay down on top of these pieces so that I've got essentially two layers uh, of work surface uh, that I can lay my drill, uh, my drills. <laughs> I'm so used to diamond painting uh, so that I can lay my puzzle pieces out uh, in a single layer, but two, two levels high. And then I'll just move them around uh, from time to time. And I'll have those organized by color so that um, I'm working as efficiently as possible to finish this. And I have to move some chairs around here. I live in a small condo, so space is at a premium. So I'm already noticing, just in terms of the quality of this puzzle, it's not very good quality. Like, those are super, super thin pieces and um this is not this is not something that bothers me because i don't ever plan on doing these puzzles again when i finish one it will go in the box for the salvation army or goodwill or whichever store i happen to be driving past when i have the bag with the stuff in it so here, there are two pieces that are still together. I'm breaking those up because I would consider it cheating to uh, leave them together. And yeah, some of these pieces are pretty banged up, which is too bad since I literally just opened this puzzle. But again, I'm not overly fussed about it because the point is just to work on a puzzle, have some fun, and then be able to put it away and forget about it and I'll work on it again another day. So there were a few pieces that were stuck together so I'm just putting them far apart from each other so that I feel like I am not cheating. See here we've got another one that um, is all bent already. But, you know, I mean, this puzzle cost $11.15 Canadian. So, I don't know, like $9.50 or something US. Uh, it's not an expensive puzzle. And it's going to take me hours, like the rest of the day, if not longer, to put it all together. So, you know, that's, that's good value for money. As far as I'm concerned. I mean, you may disagree. But um, I think it's good value for money. And so I am happy to be working on this. And I'm running out of, I'm really running out of space. So I'm gonna go and get myself some foam board or something like that to lay down on top of this. I filled my hand too full because I am dropping pieces out of my hand onto the counter, possibly messing up my more or less straight rows here. All right, I'm gonna go get a piece of something to lay down here. Okay, so the first something I'm gonna lay down is this um, cutting board. And I fully expect that the time that I'm spending right now to put all the pieces, you know, face up, um, before I even organize them according to color, will be time well spent. 
because it will help me to, uh, you know, once I start working on it, uh, to work on it faster than I otherwise would be able to. I don't want them touching because I do want to see space between them. And I just realized that having this with all the markings on it, that's not necessarily the best idea I've ever had. So I think what I'm going to do first, after I finish the outside, is do that phoenix bird or whatever kind of bird that is. It looks like a phoenix. Uh, I'll, I'll do the bird first and, um, you know, get a sense of accomplishment from finishing the bird. And then I'll decide what I want to work on next. So I am seeing bits and pieces of that bird and um, I'm tempted to start setting them aside already, but I want to do this first because I've sort of got a plan for how I want to approach this. And even though it's not going to be the most uh, time-saving plan, that's okay. I'm doing this for relaxation and, you know, just sort of, it's a very meditative kind of thing to be looking for these shapes. And so I'm perfectly happy to do it in the steps that I had planned. And then if it takes a little longer, big deal. Actually, if it takes a little longer, it's not a big deal. And right now I'm just enjoying looking at these puzzle pieces, getting a sense for uh, the textures that appear in the image and, uh, you know, what colors butt up against which colors. And as I'm working on this, I'm also thinking about, okay, what's the next um, sort of defining color grouping that I'm going to work on? And I think it's going to be these sort of navy blue uh, verging on black um parts of the diamond of the uh jigsaw puzzle <laughs> i'm so used to saying diamond painting because for the last i don't know two and a half years it's been all diamond painting that has been the only craft that i have done at all and so to be doing now puzzling is uh very different and i have to get used to using new words <laughs> And if you are coming to my channel because of the puzzling, uh, I hope you're not terribly disappointed because this is me starting my channel puzzle feature. Uh, this is the very first one and I did not practice. I have not been doing puzzles, uh, you know, throughout my life. I think I've maybe have done 15 puzzles over my lifetime. Um, as you saw from the intro, I'm not a young woman, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is new to me, and if you're watching, it's probably not new to you, so, um, I hope that you uh, will give me a chance to get good at this, uh, over time. And who knows, I may not actually love doing this. And if that's the case, then, you know, these few puzzles that I've started off with, they may be the last ones I show on my channel. We'll see. Because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to do something a little different from diamond painting and give my viewers a bit of a change from my normal subject matter. So... Um, I figure everybody wins that way. Oops. Okay, it seems like I'm getting to the part of the bag where the, most of the outer pieces were because the I wasn't getting a whole lot of edge pieces uh, early on. But now I'm getting a lot more. 
So I probably should have mixed up the pieces a little bit better, but that's okay. I'm going to go easy on myself this time. I'm not going to be too self-critical. That is not what this channel is about. This channel is just about having fun doing whatever I think might be fun on a given day. So there's another one where the, the head there, the Audi, has, uh, has been bent in the bag. And um, so I expect that that one will be a little bit harder to fit together. All right, I'm going to need a third layer. Uh, so I'll get that as soon as I run out of space here. I need to go get something to lay on top of this. Okay, so what I've got is this piece of, um, it's the back of a poster frame uh, that um, fell off my wall years ago and I thought someday I'll have a use for that. And someday has arrived. And at least until I get that um, felt that I've, well, that I've ordered because I got the, the puzzle, the puzzle mat and the blow up inner thing and all kinds of stuff. Because I thought, ah, if I'm going to start doing puzzles, may as well have, you know, all the various stuff that uh, might come in handy. And I don't know how much of that is necessary. I mean, really, I think all you need is just flat spaces to lay the pieces out in. Uh, so for example, um, I, I might move these into um, baking trays, like cookie, tra cookie trays, cookie sheets, rather. Um, because they're flat, they have edges, uh, they don't take up a ton of room, and I think uh, it would make sense to use something like that uh, when I move to start putting these in order by color and stuff. Certainly I'll work off a cookie sheet uh, when I'm working on a particular piece or part of the puzzle. I'm actually really surprised by how often I do use uh, kitchen stuff for my crafts. Uh, kitchen tools and kitchen uh, paraphernalia is useful for so much more than just in the kitchen. Now I actually probably should be using this to lay the puzzle on as opposed to this because it's 50 by 75 I don't even know if that's 50 by 75 yeah it's, it's just 70 it's just over 75 and it's, oops, it's almost 60 so I'm good What you see now is the three different layers here of the puzzle pieces that are all laid out. Over here we have the edge pieces. So I'm going to ignore that stuff over there for now and I'm going to work on this. And uh, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a piece of tape over this handle uh, 
because I don't want pieces falling underneath. Because with it stuck to the counter here, now this thing's not moving. I can work on this, it's not going anywhere. So let me make sure that the camera is set up so that you can see the entire piece of cardboard. And here we go. So at this point, I have been working on this, at this part of the table, uh, for 56 minutes and 29 seconds. So um, I'm going to start a timer. Oh, no, I'm not because that's going to stop the recording. Uh, so I'm just going to keep track. It's going to be 57 minutes by the time I get back over here. So let's go. Uh, what I am going to do is put this down here so that I can refer to it. And I'm just going to start working. And I put aside all the corner pieces so I know what goes where. And that will help me to get a start. There's that last corner piece. There it is. I'm not sure. I think that's the way it goes. Okay. I got my first two pieces together. That's good. Now I know that I will be able to do this puzzle. So sometimes I, I have to hold them up to the light to see if I am doing it right. Okay, so I am uh, already having some trouble and I am realizing that this puzzle is going to be really hard to do because the cuts are all so similar that it's hard to know uh, without holding pieces up to the light if you've actually got the pieces with the right match. Um, wow. I was not expecting that at all. Probably starting with one of the tougher parts of the puzzle here. So these pieces are incredibly thin. Uh, I think this puzzle was advertised as, you know, three layers of paper. Let me just say, these are not thick layers of paper. Uh, it's very, very thin. And I'm finding it really hard to work with. And it's hard to tell if they even fit. Oh my God, this is very frustrating. Okay, so I have to revise what I said about when I finish this, I'm gonna, you know, take it in to a Salvation Army or something like that. No, because uh, when I finished a section, and I'm sure that it's right, I'm going to have to put little bits of glue down to hold the pieces together because they are not holding themselves together. The paper is just too thin. So that is a disappointment, but it is what it is. Oh my God, they just, they're, it, they're just not thick enough to stay together. So 
that leaves me wondering, are they actually the right pieces that I'm fitting together, or am I wrong about how they fit together? And I suspect that sometimes I'm wrong about how they fit together. edges except for that piece and that piece. Everything seems to fit, although this really is a poor quality cut. Um, yeah, the pieces are just too thin. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can find the two pieces that are missing, the two edge pieces that are missing. And um, I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, so I've got my um, baking sheet. And what I'm going to do now is um, while I'm looking for those edge pieces that are missing, I am going to pull out all of the bird. So all of the bird over here and all of the clock over here. Okay, there's one there's one piece that I'm missing. There's the other piece I'm missing. So I think I've got all the pieces I need. Uh, here are the two edge pieces. These are pieces of what I think is the clock. These are pieces of the phoenix. So we're just going to move this all over once again. I'm going to put these two pieces in. Like so. Okay. Okay, so I now have the edge all done. The thing is, because this is really not a good quality puzzle, um, it's not going to stay together. So I'm going to go uh, and I'll show you. Now in here I have some very watered down, just plain white glue. And so what I'm going to do is remember I said I use a lot of kitchen stuff for my crafts these are silicone uh, baking mats so since nothing sticks to silicone what I'm gonna do is 
move this puzzle so that it's resting on top of the silicone mat. And I'm just going to glue the pieces together using the mat as um, protection because I don't want glue all over the cardboard. And I know you can buy puzzle glue and stuff, but I'm not going to spend a fortune on puzzle glue for a puzzle that I'm only going to put together once. And then it will just go in recycling. Okay, so I can get these pieces all together. See, usually when you're doing a puzzle, the pieces, you can move chunks together. But this puzzle, because it's so thin, you can't do that. And so I have to, um, I have to be reassembling it constantly. There we go. And I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of glue, so it's not going to take a long time to dry. And while that's happening, I'm going to take care of some other business. So I will uh, pause and come back in um, a moment after I get this glue all done. They don't actually lock together. So I'm hoping I'm not going to have to do this for the entire puzzle because that will be annoying. And of course, what this means is, if I did make a mistake, uh, that mistake is going to be cemented in place. And I'm trying to just push it down into, oops, into the um, gap. Well, there is really not supposed to be a gap, but into the uh, cut between the pieces so that the pieces will stick together. Okay, so that's all I can do for now until this dries. When this dries, I'll do the next section. All right, I will be back in a while. I am back at it. I um okay. So what? Yikes! What I did was I just moved this a little bit. Um, oh, it's mostly dry here. It's not a hundred percent dry. Um. As soon as I, as soon as I release it, the pieces come apart. So, oh my goodness, this is, this is not a good puzzle. I'm not happy with this puzzle at all, at all, at all, at all. Um, so, uh, I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit more, and I will come back. So, trying to glue it was a bad idea. Bad, bad idea. I'm going to tape it. Uh, and so, this is going to be a pain in the ass uh, because. Oh, wait a minute. No, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. Because, guess what, my friends? Guess what? Um. And what I am going to do is, now this glue down here is still a little bit wet. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to close this up. There we go. And uh, I'm going to put another piece. Don't want any, don't want any puzzle pieces to fall through here. So I'm just going to tape that up again. There we go. There. 
Okay, so now I have no holes. Um, and I used the silicone baking mat uh, to protect the cardboard on this side from getting wet glue on it. Oh, I'm going to need this still because what I want to do is um, use that, oops, use that alien tape. That's no good. I uh, want to use that alien tape on this side of the cardboard because I'm going to flip the thing over. Release this from the alien tape. There. Done. And now I should be able just to flip this over, more or less. And place this there. Okay. So, whoops. <laughs> Glue. <laughs> oh my God, this is a nightmare. All right. There we go. All right, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just put this all back together. Oh, I see what the letters on the back are. It is to help you put it together if you're having a hard time. Okay, everybody. So, um, here's where I'm leaving it for tonight. It is 8.30 at night. Uh, I've spent, I don't even know quite how long. Uh, my da battery died while I was recording. And, um, and rather than wait to sort of stick this together I just went ahead and taped it all together so the outside is now taped on the bottom and um, I am now ready to work this puzzle now what I realized is I taped this down no I taped it down the right way okay um, so yes, yeah, so the pieces are all taped together because otherwise they would be constantly falling apart. And I realized using glue wasn't the best thing because, um, it was just making a mess. So tape, tape works, tape is good. Um, just got some ratty ends of tape here that I'll probably be picking at for the next few days. But anyway. So this now is ready to move on to the next stage, which is I have the pieces for the clock that goes down here and the uh, Phoenix, which goes here, sorted on this tray. I've got all of my other pieces right there. I have my image now. Um, a little bit of a nightmare is these pieces <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now off camera is put all of these pieces on another piece of foam core or something that I'll be able to put in this folder and then at night what I'll be able to do is just close up the folder and uh, get it out of the way um, so that I'll have a little bit of counter to use until I finish this. Now, if I enjoy doing these puzzles, I'll actually buy a table that I can set up in my bedroom because that's the only place I have any space. Um, and, uh, and I'll have like a, a big puzzle table. I'll get something at Ikea or something. And, um, and then I'll at least have some space that's dedicated to puzzling. Uh, but that's not what I have right now, and I don't want to make that investment unless I know that I'm going to enjoy doing this. I already know that I don't enjoy this puzzle. I think it'll be, you know, fun to put together the picture and everything, but, uh, like, I've always done 
better quality puzzles. When I was younger, they were like Ravensburger and stuff like that. And this is not a Ravensburger puzzle. Let me tell you that for nothing. Uh, it is really, really frustrating. And so, yeah. Um, note to self, invest in better puzzles next time if you're gonna continue. Uh, so that's it for today. And uh, so that's part one of this video. I'll post part two down the road. Uh, so I'm gonna insert the total time that I have spent working on this puzzle uh, right here. Uh, because what with the fast forwarding that I did and the work that I did off camera and everything, um, I'll tell you what the actual time that I've spent so far is. And I will tell you also that I've learned many things during this exercise uh, that will stand me in good stead next time I start a puzzle. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your comments down below. I would love to know what you think of the way I've been approaching this video. And um, yeah, that's it for today. Take care and come back and visit with me for part two, which will be hopefully in the next day or two. All right, bye-bye.